Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has said that the suspected leader of ISIS has been killed in Syria. He said Abu Hussein al Qureshi has been neutralized by Turkey's intelligence agency, the MIT. Erdogan said that the MIT had been monitoring Qureshi for a long time before launching the operation. The Islamic State group announced the death of its previous leader last year in November and replaced him with Abu Hussein al Qureshi. A streak of tracer fire lit up the sky over Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. This comes as Ukrainian air defense systems repelled Russian missile attacks. Air raid sirens blared across the country for more than three hours. Ukraine's armed forces said that 15 out of 18 missiles that Russia launched had been destroyed. Ukraine has said that it's still in control of a key supply route to the city of Bakhmut. Russian forces have been trying to take over the city of Bakhmut for 10 months now. The commander of Russia's Wagner private military group has demanded more ammunition to continue the fight in the city. Russia sees Bakhmut as a stepping stone to attack other cities. However, Kyiv has vowed to keep def defending Bakhmut. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky held a phone call with his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron. The two leaders discussed the situation on the front line. They agreed on additional solutions that would strengthen Ukrainian forces on the battlefield. This comes after Zelensky announced that Kyiv will launch a counteroffensive against Russian forces without Western aircraft. Fighting continues in Sudan despite the two rival factions agreeing to a 72-hour ceasefire. The two groups, which are the Sudan's army and the Rapid Support Forces paramilitary group, accused each other of violating the ceasefire. Meanwhile, Sudan's Civil Aviation Authority has announced that the closure of the country's airspace will be extended till May 13th. India has safely evacuated 3,000 of its nationals from Sudan. Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson said that an IAF flight carrying the 16th batch of evacuees took off from Port Sudan. This was part of Operation Kaveri, launched to evacuate Indians from the crisis-hit country. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh is set to embark on a three-day visit to the Maldives. He will hold bilateral talks with his Maldivian counterpart, Maria Ahmed Didi, and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdullah Shahid. A statement by the Indian government said, and I quote, the entire gamut of defense relations between the two countries will be reviewed during the deliberations. Singh will also interact with the Indian diaspora in the Maldives. Paraguay's ruling party candidate, Santiago Pena, has won the country's presidential election. With this, Pena has pledged to maintain Paraguay's long-standing diplomatic ties with Taiwan. Paraguay is one of the 13 countries that maintain diplomatic ties with Taiwan that China considers part of its own territory. U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is on a two-day trip to Israel. He met his Israeli counterpart, Amir Ohana. McCarthy is all set to address the Israeli parliament, or Neset as it's known. With this, he will become the second U.S. House Speaker to do so. McCarthy said he's looking forward to the 75-year-old nation's next 75 years. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has vowed that the U.S. will support the peace process between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Over the weekend, he held separate conversations with the leaders of the two countries. Armenia and Azerbaijan are engaged in a decades-long conflict. They fought wars over the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh. North Korea has criticized the United States and South Korea over an agreement to bolster the deployment of America's strategic assets in the region. North Korea said that the move would escalate tensions to the brink of a nuclear war. 
During the summit, U.S. President Joe Biden had pledged to provide Seoul with insights into nuclear planning. North Korea state media said that the agreement will make the two allies take the most hostile and aggressive action against North Korea. The law enforcement agencies in the U.S. continue their investigation into the Texas shooting in which five people were killed. Authorities released a photo of the suspect who's currently on the run. Police say that the suspect used an AR-15 style rifle in the shooting. All five victims of the shooting were from Honduras. Pope Francis has urged Hungarians not to close the door on migrants who are quote-unquote foreign or unlike us. His statement comes in contrast to the anti-immigrant uh, policies of Prime Minister Viktor Orban. In the past, Orban has said that he would not allow Hungary to be transformed into an immigrant country. He claims that countries in Europe have become unrecognizable to their native people. Hundreds of workers in Cambodia rallied on May Day to demand better working conditions and higher pay. They waved Cambodian flags, banners and chanted, Long live the workers! Many of the demonstrators are from the country's garment and construction industries. Eighteen people have been killed after a bus fell off a cliff in western Mexico. 33 people have been injured. The vehicle fell some 15 meters down a deep and narrow gorge. 11 women and 7 men are among the victims. 11 minors have been hospitalized. Search and rescue operations are underway. The state of Texas in the US witnessed severe storms and gusty winds. At least five tornado warnings have been issued in the state. Local media says that more than 81,000 people were without power on Saturday. The American state of Florida witnessed a tornado. The tornado flipped a car into the air and hurled debris over a highway in the Palm Beach area. There are multiple reports of damage to homes, buildings and power poles. The tornado was part of a series of severe weather events to have hit Florida over the weekend. A number of earthquakes shook the Salton Sea region of Southern California within 24 hours over the weekend. The seismic activity reached up to 4.5 magnitude. The American states of California and Nevada witnessed over 200 earthquakes of 3 to 4 magnitude in a year. A group of environmentalists in Mexico protested against a major construction project in the country's Yucatan Peninsula. Protesters say it will bring devastation to the under underwater caves and wildlife in the area. Mexican President Obrador has said that the project will help bring economic growth and develop poorer regions in the country's <laughs> south. A new study has found that rising air pollution can increase the risk of cardiac arrhythmias on ir or irregular heartbeats. The research was based on nearly 200,000 hospital admissions in China. It found a significant risk of irregular heartbeats within the first few hours of an increase in air pollution levels. A study conducted last year found a link between fine particulate air pollution and cardiac arrhythmias in otherwise healthy teenagers. As per media reports, PNC Financial, JP Morgan and Citizens Financial are some banks that have submitted final bids for First Republic Bank. This comes as US regulators have been trying to clinch a sale of First Republic. The deal comes less than two months after Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank failed. If a deal goes through, it will be the third major US regional bank to fall. The chairman of the Swiss National Bank, Thomas Jordan, has said that Swiss banking regulation and supervision needs to be reviewed. He added that the regulations will need an in-depth analysis and that quick fixes must be avoided. His comments come after the recent collapse of former Swiss financial giant Credit Suisse.
financial giant PricewaterCoopers, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, sorry, has said that it's planning to invest $1 billion in generative artificial intelligence. It will invest the money over the next three years in its U.S. operations. The company aims to automate aspects of its tax, audit, and consultant, uh, consulting services with the integration of AI. Paper Magazine has reportedly laid off its entire staff. Editorial operations in the company will cease immediately. The layoffs will affect between 20 to 30 full-time staff as the company seeks to slash its expenditure. The pop culture magazine rose to fame post its Break the Internet photo shoot with Kim Kardashian. Media reports suggest chip maker Arm has filed for a US stock market listing. It sets the stage for this year's largest initial public offering. Arm is reportedly seeking to raise anywhere between 8 to 10 billion dollars through its IPO. However, reports suggest that the exact timing and the size of the IPO will rely on market conditions. Sportswear giant Adidas is facing a lawsuit from its investors. They allege that the company routinely ignored the extreme behavior of Ye. Ye was formerly known as Kanye West. He was in a partnership with Adidas to sell his brand Yeezy on its platforms and stores. Adidas dropped the partnership last year. Japan's Astellas Pharma has agreed to buy US drug maker Ivoric Bio. Astellas will reportedly buy Ivoric for about $6 billion. This will be Astellas' biggest acquisition ever. The deal will give the company a broader access to a range of ophthalmolog opth opth ophthalmology treatments. Elon Musk has said that Twitter will begin to take a 10% cut from its users' content subscriptions after the initial free period ends. Earlier, Musk had made public his plans of allowing users to offer content subscriptions on Twitter. Musk had said that Twitter would not take any commission from the subscriptions for 12 months. Additionally, publishers will also be allowed to charge non-subscribed users for each article. Microsoft has said that it has signed a 10-year deal with cloud gaming platform Enware. The deal will help Microsoft bring Xbox and Activision Blizzard games to its platforms. This comes shortly after Britain blocked Microsoft's $69 billion acquisition of Activision. Italy has lifted its ban on the use of ChatGPT in the country. This comes after ChatGPT maker OpenAI addressed issues raised by Italy's Data Protection Authority. The company has said it will provide greater visibility of its privacy policy. It will also provide users the option to object to the use of their personal data. Moving on to sports. In cricket, Mumbai Indians beat Rajasthan Royals by six wickets with three bowls left. The match was played at Mumbai's Vankade Stadium and became the 1,000th fixture in the history of the IPL. Rajasthan's Yashasvi Jaiswal scored 124 runs in just 62 bowls, taking a side to a total of 212 runs. However, Mumbai's Tim David stole the show with an unbeaten 45 in just 14 bowls. He hit a hat-trick of sixes in the final over to secure the win for Mumbai. In another IPL thriller, Kings 11 Punjab beat Chennai Super Kings by four wickets with zero balls remaining. The match was played at Chennai's M. H. Chidambaram Stadium. Chennai's Devon Conway scored an unbeaten 92 of 52 balls. Skipper M. S. Dhoni hit back-to-back -back sixes to end Chennai's innings at 200 for four wickets. For Punjab, uh, Prabhsimran Prab Singh and Liam Livingston scored quick 40s, taking the game to the wire. With three runs needed of the last ball, Punjab's Raza and Khan ran their way to secure the four-wicket win. In football, Manchester City beat Fulham 2-1 in the Premier League. 
City's Erling Holland opened the scoring charts on a penalty in the third minute. Hosts Fulham fought back as Carlos Vinicius scored in the 15th minute. Meanwhile, City regained the lead as Julian Alvarez whipped in a screamer from 25 yards. City are back at the top of the table and closer to winning their fifth title. Hosts Liverpool beat Tottenham Hotspurs 4-3 in a thriller on Sunday at Anfield. Curtis Jones, Luis Diaz and Mohamed Salah scored for Liverpool in the first 20 minutes of the game. Spurs fought back as Harry Kane and Hyo Min Son scored one each for their team, taking the tally to 3-2. Spurs scored again in injury time and the match looked like a draw. However, Diego Jota scored in the 94th minute to secure the win for Liverpool. In Bundesliga, Bayern Munich beat bottom club editions. Borussia Dortmund's title chances suffered a serious blow after they drew one all with it. In tennis, defending champion Carlos Alcaraz advanced to the round of 16 in the Madrid Open. Spain's Alcaraz overpowered Bulgaria's Grigor Dimitrov 6-2-7-5 in just an hour and a half. The young Spaniard is hoping to retain his title at the Madrid Open. He'll be squaring off against Germany's Alexander uh, Zhuwov in the next round. Moving on to motorsports, in Formula 1, Red Bull's Sergio Perez won the Azerbaijan Grand Prix on Sunday. Perez edged past his teammate Max Verstappen to win the race in Baku for the second time. The Mexican is now six points behind Verstappen, with two wins each after two rounds. In MotoGP, Ducati's Francesco Bagnaia won the Spanish Grand Prix on Sunday. Bagnaia dented, denied KTM's Brad Binder a sprint race double victory to reclaim top spot in the rival standings. Championship leader Marco Betsipki Con uh, conceded his top spot to Bagnaia after crashing with seven laps to go. In chess, China's Ding Li Zhen was crowned the 17th World Chess Champion in Astana, Kazakhstan. 30-year-old Ding defeated Russian chess grandmaster Ian Nepomnishi to break the 14-game tie. With the Ding's triumph, China now holds the men and women's chess world titles. K-pop band Teen Top have announced a comeback after a hiatus of four years. The five-member boy band debuted in the year 2010 with the album titled Come Into The World. They released their ninth and last album in 2019, following which the members enlisted for mandatory military service. Now the band performed live for a Korean radio show and announced their comeback plans. K-pop band Blackpink has set a new record. Blackpink has become the first all-girl group to surpass 40 million followers on Spotify. They've also, they also have a record 10 billion streams on the music platform. Moreover, Blackpink recently made history as first as the first Korean female headliners at the music festival Coachella. Reports of BTS singer Jimin's lookalike dying due to plastic surgeries surfaced last week. It was reported that Canadian actor Saint Von Colucci died after getting 12 surgeries to look like Jimin. Now, reports suggest that the lookalike and his death were an AI hoax. No official handle for the actor or information on his skin could be found. Even the hospital where he allegedly died was reported to be fictional. Basketballer Shaquille O'Neal has returned to rap with a song titled King Talk. The song celebrates the American Basketball League known as the NBA. King Talk is made in collaboration with Ghanaian-American rapper Black Wave. The single will release on the 2nd of May. Drama series The Morning Show has received an early renewal for season 4. 
The news was announced ahead of season three's fall premiere this year. The show stars Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. Actor John Hamm will be a new addition to the show. The release date for season three of the drama series Only Murders in the Building has been announced. The new season will premiere on the 8th of August. Actor Steve Martin, who stars in the show, revealed the date during a talk show. The show will also have two new cast members, Meryl Streep and Paul Rudd. Actor Stanley Tucci has opened up about his 2017 cancer diagnosis. Tucci says that he was absolutely terrified when he first learned he was diagnosed. He, had, he said he was shocked as he had lost his wife to breast cancer in 20, 2009. He thanks his second wife, Felicity Blunt, and actor Emily Blunt for helping him through the recovery. Animated film The Super Mario Brothers Movie has hit a new milestone. The video game adaptation has crossed $1 billion at the worldwide box office. With this, it has become the first billion dollar plus film of 2023. It's also now the 10th, only the 10th animated film to cross these figures. Italy's Far East Film Festival celebrated its 25th anniversary this year with a record number of film screenings. Over 78 films from 14 countries were shown at the Asian cinema event. The festival invited over 200 filmmaker guests to mark the occasion. This was the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic that the festival returned to a fully physical format. Late fashion designer Karl Lagerfeld's ambitious hospitality project in Macau is set to open soon. The hotel is named the Karl Lagerfeld Macau and it will open its doors in June. Lagerfeld designed the hotel by blending Chinese designs with Western aesthetics. The hotel has 271 rooms and an indoor swimming pool. International bookings for the hotel are currently open.